Most people in life are looking for how do I make a life worth living and retirement worth having. I slept outdoors tonight, as I always do, I should say last night, as I always do, because I like camping, and it's a lot of fun. And I like camping outside, under the sun, and under the moon, and under the stars. And I do like it, except last night was rainy, and the wind was blowing, so I slept for a few hours, not long, just long enough for the Lord to allow me to rest. And openly, that means that I can be at my peak best during a period of time when I'm asked by my future employer. And when I say future, it's because I have money that hasn't been yet satisfied for the work that I've been doing. And that's okay, because I've made the decision of how I'm going to help myself in every way. But as a man who is pretty old and has a lot of job experience, a decent amount of knowledge in marketing and consulting and training and teaching foreign language, I don't have to produce the same life as how that I've been through some strife. I can produce a new life outside of myself. Outside of myself is sort of an interesting concept. When you live outside of yourself, you are living in the best way for your life. You're looking at your life and your time management and your business and how you make an income, and you're saying, okay, my life isn't going exactly the way I'd like it to, and I'd like to have a different life, I'd like to have more fun, I'd like to have a little crew, and I'd like to be really good in life. I'd like to feel good before God. I'd like to feel like my life mattered to someone. I'd like to feel like my life and my wife's and all those things that are important in life actually are important to someone. But when it's important to someone isn't when it's important to someone. But when it becomes important to someone is when you look at your life and go, okay, this is how you make your living. How much are you making per hour even if you're on salary? How many hours does it take you to actually make that living? And that's called what I used to call in my training programs marketing math. And what you end up figuring out is what is the world telling you that your value is per hour? And I don't like the world telling me that, that my value per hour is a minimum wage. That doesn't make me feel good because I'm used to acquiring through my own skill set, my own social networking in business groups, and my own interactions with people who like me enough to refer me because they've liked me enough to like me enough to do something to actually tolerate me, or better yet, to actually produce in their mind that I'm actually walking my talk. I tell people all the time that I give referrals is what they say to themselves. And in our programs, we usually prove that they don't give any referrals at all. But we make them to create a tribe, a list of people that really sort of are good to them and like them and encourage them. And then we say, okay, those are the people that you're referring them. And hopefully at some point in life, they'll decide to refer back to you. But isn't that the point of the Go-Giver book that of, of the the wonderful uh, men who wrote that book together that I've actually interviewed on my uh, YouTube channel, right? What we're talking about isn't really important to Bob Berg and to John David Mann, but I had that opportunity because they gave it to me. I called, I said, I'd like to interview you, and I took it from there. How we made that interview was different for each man. What one man was comfortable with, the other man might not have been. And I honor my agreements because I'm the lucky guy who gets to interview world-famous authors where their books have been translated in a lot of languages. My next attack in that series was going to be something else, but it didn't quite fly because other things in my life started occurring. So I had to kind of shift course in that world and try something else. And everybody has a right to keep trying and, and self-testing or basically testing the marketing data, will this fly? Will this make me a living? Will this make me money? But when I look at my life and the fact that I like traveling, I'm looking at the fact that police officers stole my business vehicle, and somebody then stole my specialized license plate that I made for my two loves. And openly on that license plate is two different meanings in the numbering. My love might know it one way, my other love might find it another way, but I'm giving code in my world, saying these are the people that I love, but these are the people that I have the right to bring into my family of choice. Now, I'm not going to lead you into every single direction of where I was going with this educational video because you might have already learned two or three things about marketing your life, but the most important aspect of living is not making a living in terms of earning. The most important aspect of living and earning is, do I have enough time for my children? Do I have enough time to mind my man? Do I have enough time to go to church houses and pray and preach and teach and openly make an earning off of things that I'm important that I find important to me? Like when people get displaced by cybercrime, what happens to them? When police attack them for five or more years, what happens to them? 
How does it? How does a displaced executive who ran his own business? Because why isn't he an executive? Some people say no. An executive man is the leader of his own business. He can call himself any different title he wants to based on the people he's talking to. But if I'm talking to other executives of corporations, they can understand that word displaced executive. It basically means that I got outplaced or moved out of my regular position in leadership of my own business or in something else. When I was an interpreter, we were called interpreters or, in my case, a bilingual coordinator. You see, everybody's different. There's also a way to become a bicultural person, but that's a little different. What we're talking about in life is that we have many titles that we play, and that's our role today. We also have many rules we have to follow for each industry. So if I'm an interpreter in manufacturing, I have to follow QS 9000, or maybe now it's ISO, and I can't remember the number now, 18,000, uh, 18, I don't know. But anyway, my point is that every industry has some professional standards and benchmarks, like Deming's wonderful quality assurance programs, and the GOES of the Japanese industry. Right? There's GOES, and there's TQPM, and there's all sorts of things of, <coughs> of uh, sorry I'm forgetting it <laughs> right now, but QSDM, and we have all kinds of anachronisms that are working in that industry that we have to follow. It helps people know what the rules are of life in their job, which leads us to their responsibilities, motherfuckers. You have certain responsibilities that belong to you for your job, and then you have other responsibilities that don't belong to you. So when the little player is running after me and trying to cost me with his ideas about my interest in his life, interfering with my life when I'm talking to one of my potential business partners and interrupting that conversation telling me and telling him, I'm going to call the police on that man, I look at that man and go, what are you, 12? You're not the responsible person for your company. You don't have the right to misrepresent your company, banker, apartments by threatening a man you barely know for something.